Hi, I'm Tamara Lackey, and on this episode of Redefined Show for Adorama TV, I sit down with Rocco N. Cora, known internationally not only for his standout photography, but also for his fine art printing expertise and his success in international print competitions. Listen in as he shares some invaluable advice about how to stand out. Hi, Rocco. Hey. Hey, how, how you doing? doing? Good, good. You are uh, here at WPPI oh, yeah. in Las I'm, Vegas. I'm and you just spent the weekend chairing uh, the international print competition. I have. Yes. Tell us what exactly that means. My role as a chair is to bring out, I guess, the best out of the judge because they want to articulate a, a particular uh, thought or, a, or an idea they have about an image, um, but it needs to be done, you know, cohesively. Yes. <laughs> it needs to be done within a set period of time because time is of the, of essence, the essence when you have so many yeah. images to do. So as a chairperson, we facilitate that process and, yeah, it's great. And, and the interesting thing, if uh, nobody's ever been in a print competition or entered a print competition, is that people sit in the room while a panel of judges judge yeah. all this work yeah, that comes yeah. up, and often they'll be sitting there while their print comes yeah. up. And that requires a certain level of not only creative feedback, but sensitivity. That's right, it does. Yeah. yeah absolutely. So you need to be mindful that the audience is watching. And um, yeah, and occasionally just you know address the audience as to what is happening and why it's happening. Yeah. Um, which is important, you know. And, and you personally have, well, professionally, have done extraordinarily well in yeah. competition over the years. You've won, I mean, how many awards do you think? Um, let's begin with Australia. Australia, I'm the only photographer to ever win for Wedding Photographer of the Year titles, which is, uh, which is pretty good. That is uh, good. We've got two grands That's here. That's really yeah, good. Yeah, it's really good. But uh, two WPPI grants? Yeah. Not bad. Not That's bad good. at all. That's good. And like top uh, of the heap. lots of first and second and third places along the way, which is great. And um, triple master of WPPI and grand master of the IPP back in Australia. What what draws you to compete at that level? Like to obviously put so much, because yep. if you're getting those kinds of awards over and over again, it means you are putting a lot of blood, sweat and tears yep. and you are combining artistry and detail. I am. but. The awards for me when I first began entering um, in Australia, they, they were designed as a learning tool and they were designed to develop your, your creativity because prize money was very little mm -hmm. and it wasn't about that. Um, it was about you know encouraging photographers to take uh, their work to the next level right. and compete against you know seasoned professionals and um, you know aspire of, you know aspire to be something I guess one day. So um, for me, it was always a a way to gauge where I was. So I began competing back in 1995. That was my first year. Um, and then... And just as a way to learn. Yeah, it was a way to learn. see where you are comparatively. Yeah, so my... A lot of people don't know this, but my awards work is just a byproduct of what I shoot for my clients every yeah. day. So I don't go out and shoot for awards. It's not what I'm about. The images that result um, out of what I shoot are the images that I entered at WPPI or, you know, the IPP awards and so on. So I'm, I'm very... You're kind of out there doing it anyway. I'm doing it anyway. You might as well enter I it. Might as well, I might as well enter it. But, yeah. I'm, but I'm very fussy when it comes to, to detail and quality, you know, even with my clients, which right. is really more than, you know, having a happy client is more than any award could ever, could ever give you. Yeah. You know, and that's yeah. what really puts, you know, bread on the table at the end of the day. Right. You know, doing the right thing by your clients. Absolutely. Which is uh, what it's all about. Yeah. And, and to that end, when being fussy about your prints, you actually now have been doing printmaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay, my career in photography began in the darkroom. Yeah. So I was a lab rat yeah. before I was, I was a photographer and I was, uh, I was printing both uh, black and white and color and processing color and E6. Um, I got to see a lot of work from a lot of photographers and I was very passionate about the darkroom and I was, you know, I was printing lots and lots of images every week. And we actually owned a professional lab in Australia at my oh, point, I didn't which know was that. good, yeah, which was part of the, you know, photographic uh, studio that it was attached with. The studio that I worked for back in Australia, they were doing back in the 90s and 80s, 300 weddings a year. It was a big studio and they yeah. had six full-time photographers and they had their own professional lab, which was attached to it. And, um, full yeah. operation. F full oper it was a full operation. Yeah. So I started off as a lab rat, then became a photographic assistant, then became a photographer, then ended up owning the business as one of the major partners, um, stakeholders in the business, and then ventured off on my own and started my own enterprise um, back so in... So you um, had all that lab yeah, experience absolutely. already. Yeah, so this now, I mean, when Photoshop first came in, um, you know, people were scared. I mean, our studio embraced it. 
we were probably one of the first studios in Australia to go to go digital yeah. back in the day. And uh, we learned Photoshop from, you know, very, very early on, you know. Right. It was, um, you know, late, late 90s, early 2000s that we were, you know, doing editing and back in those days scanning. We were scanning negatives and doing digital output. Yeah. And then it just grew from there. So I grew basically as Photoshop was growing every year, I grew with it. So when people ask me, now, how did you learn all these things in Photoshop? Well, I'm only learning the new things that yeah, are coming out every year because I was stage, just, yeah. you know, Photoshop back in 98 was very different to what... Yeah what Photoshop is today. Thanks for a comprehensive yeah. education. Yeah, yeah I, I heard that uh, Photoshop, when it first came out, it was just something attached to um, the purchase of printers. Yep. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. all it was. Yeah, it was very, very basic, but yeah. uh, it's definitely not basic now, and it will allow us to do lots of things, right. which is a good thing, but it's also a bad thing. Yeah. Um, just judging a lot of the prints, you know, over the past weekend, there was a lot of images that, um, you know, had a horrible death because of Photoshop. Yeah. Too much Photoshop. Yeah, you hit, that, that comes up every year. It does. I feel like we say yeah. that all the time. I just, call it death by Photoshop. You yeah, know, it's, it is. It's, it's just crazy. like if you just stopped back here, yeah. you would have had a winner. Yeah, yeah. no, so I um, love printing. I love printmaking. So now I'm an ambassador for Canzon. Um, beautiful papers, archival. And I talk a lot about the power of print. Yes. Um, about printing beautiful archival fine art images for your clients right. that become generational, that you share with the next generation. Hardly the thing that you're going to do with a USB stick or a hard drive. I'm going to give yes. this hard drive to my son. Here, son, yeah. this is the family history. Yeah. It's not going to happen. So, for the rest of your life, you'll have this little stick. I know. For the rest of your life, you've got this stick. And maybe one day, if you plug it into a computer that can read it, uh -huh. you might see if something. If you didn't spill anything on it or didn't yeah. it for time. I, um, I got very excited recently. I found, well, my mother found photos from my christening when I, when I was a baby. Beautiful, you know, black and white, fiber-based prints that are still gorgeous today. Yeah. And I get a beautiful feeling every time my daughter looks at these. Yeah. And I know that this is now, she sees her father in that. And one day her children will see this and they see their grandfather. And it's just, it's a beautiful generational thing. It's, it's emotive. The power of print is so emotive. Mm -hmm. Very different to just looking at images on a computer screen. Which would be amazing if photographers could get their head around that. I think the world would be such a better place. You're because so right. we're You're just so not great. we're not connecting with our history anymore because we don't look at our history that way. We we look at we look at smartphones and we look at uh, you know computer screens, USB sticks, Instagram. There's so much more to printing yeah. than there is to just electronic media. And and you mentioned the word emotive. When um, when I look at your work, I see that your work is very emotive. Yep, lots of extremely. storytelling, very dramatic. Drama. Uh, wh where did that style come from? Okay, so photographic style is not something that... I, I, look, I've never set out to say this is going to be my style and this is what I do. You know, it's something that has evolved as I, as I evolved in, in my photographic career. You know, the style evolved. And I kind of look at style as a, as a journey, not a destination. A lot of photographers go, this is my style, this is all I will ever shoot. But that's been really narrow-minded because if you allow yourself to be inspired by what life, you know throws at you, well, then your images will be a reflective of, of a particular point in time. I look at my work from, say, maybe 10 odd years ago, even seven or eight years ago, you know, I was going through things and um, my work is a reflection of that, you know, there's going some very, things like just personal things, you know, yeah. just, um, like something you know, that affected you emotionally, it affected me emotionally, you know, bad hair days, all that sort of stuff, emotional. Uh, you Australians really yeah, go deep. Yeah, we do. We go, we go very deep. <laughs> no, some, some deep emotional stuff that I was going through at the time. And my work, if I look at it now, I go, wow, that was pretty dark and dark and scary. At the time that I was creating it, I had no idea that this was the case. And looking back now, you realise that your photography is so personal. It's, all about, it's about who you are as a person, as an artist. You know, you create because of your your life experiences, subconsciously, you don't even know that, but mm. that's your personality and who you are. So when you look back at, at an illustrious career that yeah. you are still thriving in, mm -hmm. um, what would you say is some of the things you did right when it came to your career? I learned first and foremost, the basics, and then build from the basics. And by the basics, you mean? I mean, I learned how to, how to light properly, how to expose properly, how to interact with clients properly. I assisted probably for a period of two years before I was given my first shot at, you know, doing maybe a second shoot on a wedding. Two years before you even could be a second shooter. Yeah. yeah, so this is the sort of, you know, grounding that we had to have. I mean, in the film days, 
it was a it was a very different discipline. Yeah, it's too expensive you know, to get It was very shot. it was very expensive. So just to give you an idea of my background, we, we began I began shooting weddings in the mid nineties and I'll be given twelve rolls of film, one twenty film on a Hasselblad is hundred and twenty shots, two rolls of thirty five mil black and white, so you know, thirty six frames, you know, per roll, and I had to cover a wedding. And we did. Every time I pressed the button, I had to think about where that image was going to be in the album. So imagine covering a wedding down, a wedding now, I should yeah. say, with 120 frames. Impossible. <laughs> I mean, you just shoot 120 frames, you're shooting the details of I'd the bride. Like, that's Little... gorgeous, but I don't want to waste it. <laughs> no, I don't want to waste it. That's pretty much it. Yeah. So there was a very different dis discipline. And that, that really set the groundwork for everything else that evolved later. Even now, I'm very contemplative when I'm creating images. It's not about... You know, I'm a strong believer it's not about the, uh, the number of images you deliver your client, but rather the quality of those images, those beautiful yeah. moments, you know, beautifully constructed moments. It's just, just the way I do things. And you put a great deal of finishing into your work. I do, I do. But the amazing thing is that the finishing really comes from having good capture. Right. Good capture, very easy to finish an image. Yeah. So we just had the, um, my um, Photoshop Plus class, which was a couple of days ago. And I pulled up some images and people couldn't believe just how quick I could do an image because all the elements were there. It was right. just about enhancing you in Photoshop. You weren't sitting there fixing, fixing, fixing. No, no. A lot of people have that, this misconception that Photoshop is about fixing and trying to create something that's not there. Think backwards. You know, create it in camera and then evolve it from there. So uh, uh, where can people find out more about you? They can find out more about me on my website rockoancora.com and my editing website which is capture to print capture to print and is that also your printmaking yes that's also the printmaking uh, business that we have um, we prepare files for you know all sorts of competitions WPPI Wonderful. we print map ship out to Vegas awesome and social media social media Instagram Rocco and Cora photo yeah and Twitter at Rocco and Cora perfect all right thank Beautiful. you so much for your thank time you. thanks Thank you so much, Rocco. Check us out here next time on Adorama TV, and don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV for all kinds of wonderful educational goodness.